Hello, my name is Sadman. I'm a computer science student studying at City University of London. And this is the video that I wish to watch when I was first starting my degree. Now, in this video, I'm going to give some of my uh, thoughts and advice that I wish to have when I was first starting my degree in computer science. One disclaimer is that uh, for the entire first year, which is this year, all of my uh, lectures, tutorials, exams, and etc. were delivered and collected online. So I have never ever attended in-person lectures to my university or I have never ever uh, had any uh, in-campus experience. So I don't know how that feels like. The only time I went to see my university were pretty much two years ago now. And there was an open day. So I, that's the time I went to see my university in person. Aside that, I have never ever been to my university. I don't have my university ID as well. So the lanyard, I don't have that. Nor I know how to go there uh, using public transportation. And of course, due to that, my experience will be far more boring and uh, basically less attractive, less interesting. And uh, yeah, so in future, when I start going uh, in-person lectures, then I'll be able to update you then. So, so far, I have attended only online university. Okay, so now we can start. This video, I have divided into two parts, pre-university and during university. So pre-university is the thing that you have to know before starting university. And during university, the thing that you have to know while you are in, in the university study. So all those timestamp will be down below in the description. So feel free to jump through the video. My first and the most important advice that I can give you is know your ultimate purpose goal in your life. If there is just one piece of advice that I want to get, uh, that I want you to get from this video would be this one. So know your ultimate purpose or goal in your life. So everything your experience of university will depend on this. So your experience not university to life overall will depend on this, on your decision that you make right now. You might say, Satman, we're too young for that. No guys, you're not too young for that. This is the right time to make the decision. This is the right time to shape your future. Guys, am I being too, too serious right now? I'm not too sure. Okay, uh, anyway, because why am I saying this? Because uh, let's say for instance, you're, you're, you wanna be an academic person. So you wanna be specialized in some particular field, maybe let's say data science, for instance, or cyber security, might be. Uh, in that case, you have to aim for your best in your bachelor degree, try to get all 70%, try to get first class in your bachelor, do a master degree, and maybe do a PhD, why not? Or maybe do other level seven or equivalent degrees. Be a master in that particular field. Or maybe you might be a career-minded person, so you might be interested to go higher in a, your career ladder. In that case, it's very important that you meet more people, do more networking, uh, find more people, attend to different career events, career fair, things like those. Another purpose of your life might be family, for instance. So you're looking to find the best partner and have a nice kids. That's that's also a good option, really. In that case, I would say have fun at university. So make this three or four years the best possible year in your life. And also you might be thinking of becoming your own boss. So entrepreneurship, for instance. In that case, it's very important that you uh, do other things aside your work. So it's very important that you don't solely focus on your work, on your assignment, on your um, study, but do other stuff. For instance, master in a particular field. So it can be web design, can be... I don't know, uh, graphics can be uh, digital marketing, game design or game modeling or whatever that might be. So based on your purpose in your life, your university experience will depend totally on that. So if it's that academic, then you have to definitely work very, very hard and get that first class in all of your uh, modules, 70% of your modules, get the first class in your bachelor degree, do a master, do a PhD, or you might be interested to find a right partner for you. Why not? That's also a good option. In that case, just take it easy, have some fun. One thing I have to mention here, whilst you are at your GCSE or A-level, I would definitely say, do not think about anything else, just aim to get good result. So your result should be your first, first, first priority, nothing else. So no partner, no relationship, nothing else. So your grades, your result is the main, main priority. However, when you are at your uh, degree at university, at that time, I would say, uh, just think about your life. So think about the purpose of your life, the meaning of your life. So whether that is academic person, in that case, definitely go for all first class, get your uh, first class in your bachelor. Or you might be a career minded person. In that case, I would say, yeah, you know, just try to do more networking, find more people, go in that event, go in that event, build more connection, build more bonds. If you are interested for, uh, let's say, um, entrepreneurship, in that case, I would say just explore different things aside your study. Your university grade is not the end of the world. Yeah. So uh, you have to pass. Do well, but don't spend, like, let's say, 15 hours in a study or 12 hours in a study because that's too much and that's stressful. So if you're interested for entrepreneurship, for instance, make sure you do well in your study because that's very important. That's your, uh, one of your first priority. Also, find some uh, new side hustle. So maybe uh, try to do websites, try to uh, learn web design, learn WordPress or whatever you want to be doing. 
uh, because uh, it's very important that you do other stuff aside from your main study thing. My second piece of advice would be that university is very expensive. We all know that. And most of the content, I mean, basically 90% of the content you can find it online for sure, for free or at a very reasonable cheap price. So if you're planning to go to university just for learning content, then I would say, guys, think about it. Because you can find the exact content online for free or at a very cheaper price. So you're paying lots of money, yeah, and that is not worth it. So if you're if you're willing to go for, just for content, then I would say just think about it because that might not be the best uh, option for you. Another thing to mention here is the university is full self-study. They'll be lecturing, explaining you new things. However, most of the time you'll be alone, sitting alone, learning new content by yourself. So there'll be not teacher or lecturer guiding you. So you alone doing it. There'll be helps, but most of the time you doing it. So what they'll do, they'll provide you some resources that you can find online and learning those really. My third pre-university piece of advice that I can give you is that everyone is from the same boat. So everyone is struggling and everyone is new at university and everybody don't know how things work. So basically feel free to speak to people, uh, meet people, um, hopefully uh, university will be open this from September. Be friendly with them because they are all struggling, they are all from the same boat and they're all like you. So they all don't know what's going on. Guys, when I was first starting university, my first week, I didn't literally know what's going on. So I had no idea what I have to do, basically, what I have to do at my university. So uh, how will I be doing the exam? So what are the content that I have to learn? I thought I have to purchase books, really, because there was no details uh, given to me. So I didn't know how things were really work. It takes time to really figure out uh, how, how things work. Ask questions to people and uh, meet people, really, because everybody is struggling. Everybody is new to university. My fourth university advice would be that computer science is not easy. Is hard. Computer science is one of the hardest degree in the world. You can Google it. There'll be late nights, there'll be pain, there'll be so much bad stuff going on uh, with you and computer science, but you have to overcome it. There's no way you have to overcome it. If you're looking for an easy degree, then I would say business, for instance, accounting, those are much easier than computer science. Computer science is very, very hard. It's not impossible. You can do it. People are doing it, people are getting uh, good grades. So why not? You can do it, but it's not easy. It's not a joke. So take it seriously. I'm going to tell you one of my stories. I'm not a person who stays awake till very uh, late at night. So I basically go to bed around, let's say 11 or 12 or sometime even one o'clock, but no later than that. And I also wake up quite early in the morning, really. So I wake up roughly around uh, same time every, every morning, roughly about, about uh, 7.30 to 8.30 between the time every morning. But guys, in, in one of my modules, in my second semester uh, called Java, I had to build a game. So for that game, I had to code for the entire night. So that's not something that happens to me. It never happened to me, really. But uh, that time did. So it's not something easy. Computer science is hard. There will be pain. There will be stress. There will be late nights. That's very normal. My fifth pre-university advice would be for those who hate maths in the GCC. I would say maths in computer science is so much fun. It's absolutely fun, guys. I also did hate math in my GCSE. Um, you're not the only one. However, math in computer science is so, so much fun because you're learning in a real life experience. You're learning math and you're applying in a real life situation. It's so much fun. It's a bit challenging really, but in a good way. My sixth and final pre-university advice would be that computer science is different from coding. So, okay, uh, there is coding involved in computer science and that's for sure. So you have to code a lot. However, uh, coding is not everything. Yeah, so there'll be coding. But there'll be other things that you have to understand. So there'll be maths involved, there'll be, uh, let's say, um, system architecture, operating system involved. But those are things that you have to understand. So coding is not everything. And this is one of the uh, misconceptions that I had. I thought like every module is about coding. So I'll be coding in all of the modules, but not true, guys. Some modules don't have coding at all. So say, for instance, in my uh, algorithm and data structure, in that module, there was no coding at all. So all I was doing, I was uh, writing some algorithm in pseudocode and also operating system. That module, I didn't have coding at all. So there was no coding, maths, no coding. Uh, yeah, so I think these three models were no coding. Everything else was pretty much a bit of coding. And I'm going to tell you some of my thoughts and advice of whilst you are at the university. So whilst you are studying computer science at your university. First, one of the most important advice that my lecturer gave me is that study for learning new things and not for grades. Okay. It's okay to worry about your grades and you should be worried about your grades but that's not your biggest thing to worry about so you should be learning new things yeah so do not worry too much about grades because that's gonna be fine you're gonna be passing you're gonna get good grades anyway the second thing to know it's not really an advice but just me telling you how british um university grades really works unlike gcs in a level where you have numbers or letter grading system university a percentage so there are five different uh, category uh different grades you can get so first thing is fail. So you can fail your uh, module or you can get um, a third class or lower second 
upper second and first so the first is, is very important and we should all aim for first me as well and most people get either upper second or lower second so lower second upper second is the most common grade that people get what well, they equivalent fail anything below 30 percent is fail 40 to 50 percent is a third class 50 to 60 percent is a, a lower second 60 to 70 percent is upper second and 70 plus is first class so now uh, what this means is that overall in your old module if you get this following percentage then you'll be able to get this following grade so you'll be either okay <laughs> leave aside fail uh third lower second upper second or first so it will be other these four grades overall for example in my university the first year computer science doesn't count toward your overall grades first year is weighted as zero percent and most universities will be similar yeah so there'll be either zero percent as a count or degree mark or there'll be very very uh, less percent there'll be maybe 20 percent or something like that will be very less so that you can catch up as CT, i think the second year counts as 40 percent of your overall degree mark and finally the third year will be 60 percent of your degree mark so uh, only the second and the third year count as CT, but we still have to pass the first year so if you get less than less than 40 percent just fail you have to retake although it doesn't count but still you failed it my third advice while studying at university would be that you know the 40 percent is the minimum uh, pass range you get 40 percent there's quite a lot of work to do it's not easy you can't do overnight and there's a lot of work to do and uh, it definitely hard work to get 40 percent so this is not easy at all but don't think that oh I'm not gonna study for the entire year, but I'm gonna study, let's say, the last two days before the exam, and I'm gonna pass. No, that ain't gonna happen. That's very unlikely that's gonna happen. So, you have to study throughout the year, do a little bit of everything, understand most of the content, and yeah, you'll be able to pass, get 40%. If you wanna do well, you can do well, I'll study more, and do more exercises, and that's already. But 40% is definitely, I assume that 40% was uh, easy to get, but it's not. It's a lot of work to do, guys. <laughs> no joking. A lot of work to do for, to get 40%. Computer science, as you know, require problem solving skills. The degree is designed in a way that they want you to fill those challenges uh, and push us through. So uh, they will put those challenges in place and they want you to push it through. And that's very important. So you have to still go ahead, still do well. My next advice would be that everybody feels lost, overwhelmed, and so on, so on, so on. Guys, this is very normal. People do face those issues. They are overwhelmed. They are lost. Some people do admit them so like you will admit that you are lost and you will admit that uh, but other people will not they will act like they are kings basically they are doing very well but they're not they're struggling inside they are deeply struggling inside some people will hide that will hide that and they will ask some intellectual question during the lectures for instance but believe me they are struggling guys everybody's struggling everybody's struggling at university okay there might be let's say in 200 people five six people very good at something but most of the people i mean majority of people they will be struggling they will not admit that some will some will not but they are next the minimum attendance well it's important that you attend all of your lectures tutorials and labs because they're compulsory so you have to attend those and also think about it, then you're paying for it so why not you should be attending lectures labs and tutorials to get as many knowledge as many um, skills as many information as you can uh, however um so far i have never heard anybody to go into trouble by not attending those some of my friends who are doing computer science and other degree at different university they told me that they missed a uh, lot of uh, labs and lex um, lectures but they never go into trouble so i think that you know you're in trouble but it's compulsory so my advice would be uh, if you are genuinely ill or if you have some uh, really important things to do then uh, yeah, you might as well miss and then catch up. Apart from that, if there is not a valid reason for it, then why not? You should be attending uh, lectures and labs. Recently, one of you have emailed me and asked me some question. I'm more than happy to go through it right now. Uh, okay, so the first question goes, is there a minimum of attendance that you have to meet in order to see the exam? Well, the answer to this question, I have to say that uh, I don't really know, uh, to be honest. Uh, because this entire first year, once again, uh, was fully online and I have never attended university. My attendance was not monitored. So there was no way they could monitor uh, our attendance. So uh, for this, I could theoretically miss all the, um, I could have missed uh, all the lectures, labs and tutorials, and I still would be able to see the exam. So uh, this is just for this year due to the pandemic, uh, but in future, I completely don't know. So whether there's going to be some sort of monitoring system, they're going to uh, monitor attendance. They have some sort of uh, minimum threshold percentage they need to be uh, meeting in order to see the exam. And I definitely don't know about it. So uh, what I can say is, uh, yeah, um, I'll just let you know. I'll just, I'll just update you in future. The next question, are all the lectures recorded? This year was a bit different than other years due to the pandemic. And yeah, so all the lectures were pre-recorded and uploaded in a good time before your uh, plenary session which is a q a or online session normally you have about uh, seven to ten days so you can watch any time any point just go on moodle 
and you can uh, watch it and they are not long so they are up about from a 50 minute to one hour and 10 uh, between the range and uh, yeah so you can watch it anytime you want so all the lectures were recorded this year and i hope also in future as well they'll be recorded when i will start attending university in person i hope so the good thing about this pre-recorded online um, lecture is that you can play back at any speed so you can choose let's say 1.2 speed 1.5 or even 1.8 or 2 in speed and that's very convenient really so you can watch one hour of lecture in uh, if you play back at two speed then it will be in about half an hour and that's what i do really so i never play back at one speed which will be always at 1.5 or 1.8 depending on the lecture next question uh, how many hours on average a student has to study in lecture or classes and how many hours are we independent study what the university recommend us to do is for each hour spent in lecture you about seven to ten hour of independent study you might say okay well what was nonsense? How, how can one hour of lecture go value to 10 hours of independent study? Guys, they're not lying and they're not even uh, guessing. That's actually a fact. So um, at the beginning, let's say in the, your first uh, few less uh, lectures, things will be okay. So things will be okay, easy. So you can get away with the uh, even five hours study. But after that, things will get harder. So uh, for each lecture, 10 hours study, roughly you can say. Sometimes if uh, the module is easy or um, you have done in the past then you can get away with less hour or if the module is a bit harder then you have to spend more time but the lecture are tailored in a way so that that one hour of lecture they give you boom whole lots of content that you don't understand and that takes lots of time to get your head around it and be able to fully comprehend those and therefore one hour of lecture is 10 hour of self-independent study finally how frequent do you have test or exam and how much does the first year count toward your final grade this is a very important question and this is one of the questions that i was asking myself uh, when I was thinking to study computer science at university. Okay, so the first part, how frequent do we have exam um, and test? Well, uh, really it depends on the module. So there are certain modules where you have a final exam and there are other modules where you have weekly exams. So it completely depends on the module. So say for instance, uh, in my module, uh, in my math module, I had three MCQ throughout uh, the term or semester and I had one final exam. And each of these three uh, multiple choice question or MCQ or mini test, you can say, are 10% of the module mark. And the final exam was 70% of the module mark. And uh, so that was pretty much heavy. And there was a written exam. And uh, uh, okay, so that was one case. Whereas on my module named uh, System Architecture, I had weekly exam. So every single week, I had one exam. Uh, as well as my operating system module, I had weekly exam. So every single week, I would have one exam. They will be less weighted, so they'll be roughly about from 3% to, uh, mm. let's say, 5 or 6%. But they'll be every week, you'll have an exam. And same goes for my web development module. So I had weekly uh, MCQ exam, and I had a final uh, submission, which was to submit working website. So it all depends on your module. So some module you have weekly exam, some module you have um, end of semester exam but one thing in common is that most of the module will have a end of semester exam and that will be final exam really in my all of the module apart from one uh, web development i had exam at the end so java i had exam uh, very uh, last week basically and uh, uh, operating system i had exam algorithm i had exam uh, yeah and so on so i had all of them i had exam i hope that this answered the first part of the question now the second part how much does the first year count toward my final grade Okay, here is university specific. So there are many universities where the first year doesn't count, is weighted 0%, like CT is one of them. And there are other universities where the first year does. So you have to uh, look at the university specific. So you have to look at the university. Even though a CT, the first year grades doesn't count, but you still have to pass. So you have to get at least 40% to pass um, to go in the second year. Otherwise you have failed and you have to retake your exam. So guys, thanks for watching. And this is my first year thoughts and advice of studying computer science at City University of London. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.